what is and has always been a competition between two fundamentally different approaches to politics. Glasgow Labour has been building a Glasgow for the many and will continue to do so if given the chance to serve. Glasgow Labour has been and would be more radical, more transformative and bolder in our ambitions for the people of Glasgow. When Labour left office in 2010, we had lifted near to a million people out of fuel poverty. It was Labour then in Westminster who had the ideas and motivation to do something about this shame in our society that has had an impact on so many in our communities. It's up to us again to ensure this critical issue is kept on the table and that to effectively tackle it, of course there are things that can be done in Westminster and Holyrood, but ultimately put ideas into practice. We need to ensure our local authorities and are funded fairly. Thank you. First of all, before I start, I want to thank the Chair for the opportunity to speak in this debate and hopefully my contribution is worthwhile. Christopher Remikins, Cunningham South CLP. And before I start, I just want to talk about my own CLP did submit a motion, but it didn't come in in time. And it did talk about some of the stuff Unison talked about with regards to municipal socialism. So I'll talk about that. To start my speech, I want to quote Rosa Luxemburg, who said, those who do not move don't notice their chains. Well, let me tell you, conference, our councils don't have to move to feel their chains. They've been bled dry with the cuts they've seen right now in the last couple of years. It's seen. Austerity is destroying our local government. And it's not just coming for the Tories, it's coming for the SNP as well. The wonderful SNP that tell us we're anti-austerity. We'll stand up for communities. But in reality, the Scottish block grant has only been cut by 1.6% since 2013. But yet, our council budgets have been cut by 6.9. I'm no expert for a 19-year-old, but I can tell you, that is an absolute disgrace what they're doing. Absolutely scandalous. <laughs> but hold on a minute, conference. That isn't, that isn't the best of it. This year we had an accounting area from a finance secretary that lost my local authority over a million pound. And we had SNP councillors up and down the country tell us this was a fair deal. I don't know what world they're living in, but that is fantasy politics to say cuts to our budgets are due to accounting errors is acceptable. But this, I don't envy councillors. I don't envy councillors at all in their position. They're faced with hard decisions or even harder decisions. But that's the reality. We need our councillors to be bold, to be radical. It's time for our councillors to stand up. We don't need managers. We need councillors that are going to be socialistly principled and going to put socialism at the heart of everything they do in local government. There's no need for managers anymore. And that is what our councillors will do across this country. And I must talk about Joe there who came up at the start. I was at the budget meeting they talked about. And I must tell you, the immense proud, pride sorry, that I was filled with when I heard my, not, my Labour uh, group council delivering such a radical budget in the face of hard cuts. This was a budget that was going to increase double the clothing grant, sorry. It was going to expand our school breakfast clubs. It was going to increase the health and social care budget at a time when it looks as if that is the, we have to accept what's coming to us. And it doesn't need to be this way. It doesn't need to be this way at all. And that is why I commend Joe and the Labour North Ayrshire councillors for the bold, radical budget they set last Wednesday in spite of all that's been chucked at them in the last few years. It's Joe and North Ayrshire Council, the people that are putting socialism at the heart of their agenda. And I would urge every council in this room to have a look what they're doing, because it is bloody fantastic, and that's something I can tell you. But what else can councils do? As I mentioned, their own CLP submitted a motion on municipal socialism. And that's something I want to talk about. It was our CLP, when we had our discussions, we had Richard Leonard down, we invited our neighbouring CLPs to a chat about, uh, to, because Richard was down. And it was Carol Malkin, who might add, well, I'm here, who's a real stalwart, one of the loveliest people you'll meet in our movement, who said this. She said, what is municipal socialism? She obviously, Carol knows what it is, um, but she said, what is it? How can we put that into a simple message that the public will hear and listen to? 
And let me tell you, Carol's absolutely right, because we can throw a big word like municipal show something out there. But let's be honest, we all know what it is. But the folk outside will not have a clue what municipal socialism is. So let me put it very simple. It's power to the people. That is exactly what it is. It takes power from big business down to local people. And people might say to us, why would you want to do something like that? And I'll tell you, because business has failed us countless now at times. It failed in 2008 when we've seen our banks collapse. It failed in the energy sector year on year when we see the big six rake profits in and nothing happens to them. It's failed in our transport system where year on year earth prices go up but the service is more reliable than the Greens for being anti-austerity. And it's sailed in our healthcare above all where profit has been put before care. It is scandalous that these people are getting away with it and that is why we need to bring it back into municipal socialism. So as simple as that, it's not right. And when profit goes into service and they go hand in hand, it has a negative effect for our public. And that is why we need municipal socialism like highlighted in the unison motion. And if government refuses to bring stuff back into public ownership, let me tell you something. It will be our councils that do it. It will be our Labour government in Holyrood led by, led by Richard Leonard does it. And it will be our UK Labour government led by Jeremy Corbyn that does it when we are in power. Because it needs to be done. So I'll conclude in this. People who would refute our argument say it's outdated. Say we're old fashioned. But let me ask you this conference. When did it become outdated to stand up for our communities? When did it come outdated to run a plain IT community? The answer is never, and it never will be in our party. We will always stand up for working class people, always stand up for our communities, and every single councillor in our party will continue to do that to the day we live on. So, the right wing Thatcherite approach has never worked. No work. The Thatcherite approach has never worked. So that is why our left wing alternative has to be great. And that is why we must endure upon a bold, radical vision for our local government. And thank you very much for listening to my speech.